Hi. Uh, mm, looks like I've got a dot on my face. It's um, on the camera. Um, welcome, uh, everyone. 11 o'clock live demo, and I'm going to show you how to do the cathedral windows with the cathedral window um, template. I have pre cut it. Uh, pretty much everything so I'm just going to quickly describe that to you because there's a bit of sewing in it so I um, I didn't want to um, waste you know half an hour just showing how to cut out fabric um, so I'm just gonna get my computer up and running so I know that you can see what I can see hi Liz hi Joe and I'm hoping the internet plays nice it's fairly windy and cloudy outside so fingers crossed yeah, um, g'day Maya, loved your quilt, thought it was awesome, loved the way you've done it. Um, Liz, g'day, Pat, hello, alright, I'll just get that up and running, um, and uh, I'll get the, the camera rolling. So I'm just going to turn this around, get it set up. So this is a cathedral windows, what it looks like, okay. Whichever way you want to turn it. This is the template. I have these in stock. They're 25 each. I have a few of them if you don't already have. Um, I've probably got about, I don't know, 10 or 12, I suppose, maybe. <laughs> but I can um, order more. No dramas. And they're pretty quick to come. So, um, well, they were last time. So if you want one of those, that's the easy way to, to do it is to uh, just... Um, use a template so it gives you the circle it also gives you some lines for folding and it gives you the fold mark of your fabric um, it's a little bit off but it gives you a guesstimate so um, you can see it sort of sort of lines up but you've got to allow for seams okay so love from Jimmy's friend g'day Elizabeth how you going um, so that's the template uh, cathedral windows so if you want one of them let me know at any time here's another one that I did just in mixed fabrics and then I quilted with the stencils um, in each block which you can do and we're going to do a table runner today so I'm going to do it uh, six by two so six blocks down six circles down and six circles uh, two circles across sorry um, so what I've done is grabbed a um, a layer cake which is 10 inch squares um, so 10 inch squares is what you need so a layer cakes are perfect for this and then I'm using black as my back backing fabric so this the backing fabric I'm using black and the black will fold over to the front sorry these are the other way around these are going to be my back <laughs> the black will be the front sorry about that um, I'll get I'll get organized one day It'll be scary too you'll all be frightened I also have cut the wadding now this is just scrap wadding that I had don't confuse me already <laughs> um, you know how easy I'm confused so so I've just pre-cut them into the size of the template and I just use the blade you can um, trim uh, sort of cut um, draw around it and then cut um, with scissors if you want to whatever suits okay so this is my top fabric and this is my backing all right so um, what you're going to need out of each one of these top fabrics is to um, put a slit in it um, I do it before I sew them together good morning Deb <laughs> um, so I just grab each one and somewhere along sort of close to the edge but not right on the edge sort of about oh, about an inch and a half down from the top just put a slit that's going to be for turning um, so I'm just going to use the scissors actually you can just take it if you wanted to which I might do um, I might grab my blade and I can just run a slit through a few at a time oh, oh that was my leg back in there put the brake back on <laughs> so just grab a handful and around about there 
a nice slit in in them you know just like that so for turning make it a bit bigger if you want to don't go too big you don't want to have it so that it frays or anything if you're using something other than a batik the black is not a batik um, good morning Lynn so it could fray so don't go too close to the edge so just put a cut in get your scissors and just trim it a little bit further so this is done to the front fabric okay not the back fabric okay so a nice slit in there good morning Helen in all those so just that's going to be the front one now um, the front one I'm talking about is this bit this is your back that's your back okay it's a little bit confusing but I'll try not to confuse you too much then what you do is you grab one of these and put your wadding over. All right, so you should have batting, backing, top, okay? And you do that in all of them. So that's one. Now you can clip if you want to. A couple of clips on the edge won't hurt just to hold the three layers together. Just two, that'll do. So that one, that one, and that one. So the one that should be looking at you is your front fabric. Now, when you're doing this and you're using fabrics that aren't batik, make sure you have right sides together. All right, so that one, so one there, and a clip there and you just go through the whole lot I think that's two oh have I got one missing I've got three yes I've got two of those there bear with me I grab two instead of one So have you had a good day today so far? It's only early. It's only 11 o'clock. Sleep well. It was a bit warm last night. It was warm here. So what I've chosen is uh, three colours, four of each. And that just makes it easy for the six by two. Been watching the Geeks Classrooms. I think my videos are taking a while to upload to try and get them to them they've got a link for the actual day but the actual class um the actual video is taking forever to send to them like to transfer it it's crazy hi Ella. so another one backing and the top so I bypassed the cutting on the demo because like I say there's going to be a little bit of sewing just to sit there and watch me sewing circles is not overly exciting um, but I wanted to show you the more constructive parts When you're cutting, I did use a 45 mil blade, but you sort of do a bit of a pizza cut. You sort of go a little bits at a time as you're turning. Morning, Deb. Now you can make this into a, a massive quilt, like 
major size quilt and you're quilting as you go believe it or not I did iron that but I didn't use steam so I very rarely use steam um, so it's all done uh, if you want to like I said in the other one I showed before which I'll show again before the night uh, before the day is out um, if you wanted to uh, quilt in each one you can come on yep um, but you don't have to because it's all together what's that say uh, Kariki Bob, Bob's I had better get to bed <laughs> cry oh that's good oh no worries Elizabeth I'll catch up tomorrow no worries darling we'll see you when you get back hi Karen you can also use these as trivets by putting in a um, um, bit of uh, insel bright in between the stuff that's heat heat tolerant um, that could also work there's lots of things you can make with these done all right so I am going to just grab these pile just like that show you this one again so I've quilted in each block okay that's the top fabric, that's the back fabric, back fabric. See? Alright, so I'll take this mat off. And I'm going to just quietly move this a little bit forward for you so you can see what's going on. Try and not make that fall, Michelle. Okay, now what I've got here in front of me, besides my glasses, which I need, they could come on and off, is this little edge guide. And I've also got this fella, which is a magnet. I sell both of these. I'm limited in these. There's only about 15 in stock, but these ones, the magnets, I have heaps. See if I can zoom that in for you. Oh, that's so much better. Hi, Bev. There we go. So this little ruler, this is going to show me where my, because I don't have a, um, I can't move my needle, so I need to know where my quarter inch is. So I put my foot down on top of the ruler, put my needle, has to be in the hole. There it is. And then I place this, now my bed is all metal, so <laughs> it has a fight with me until I get it right. There we go. That is my quarter inch there. Okay, so I can pick my need, oops, needle up and then take that out. They're $10. They are worth their weight in gold. I have 15 of those in stock. Um, so you can let me know at the end. Um, or I'll go through the comments later because it's a bit hard to write and do this at the same time. Um, now I've just got a black thread on. I'm just going to place that under there. I'm going to pop my needle down. Okay, I've got it on around about two and a half, three mil. It's a normal stitch. And I'm going to actually pop, I always put my gloves on. Not always, but I should. It just helps with the resistance so I don't so that now means I can just really nice steady just back back stitch you don't have to but that that magnet whoop, fabric caught up that magnet is going to keep that fabric at the edge now I can also turn it just a little to help that round circle guide in a bit better. Good morning Doreen. So if you don't have those magnets they're worth their weight in gold. One on each machine. They don't interfere with your electrics. 
Um, your electrics are over here, over the other side of your machine, not in this bit. Just FYI. Okay, so just feed it around. I'll get faster as I go. And that means I finish where I started. And I can go right up to there, back stitch, cut off, and that is done. Quarter inch gadget plus magnet, please. Yeah, no worries, Kerry. So it is done. That's sewn around. That's one. That's that easy. I'll write these down. Hang on, I'll get my book. Here's one I prepared early. <laughs> Kerry Lee. Kerry Lee. Um, I'll just pop it there. So it's easy to get to. Um, again, lift up, down we go. And because I've already set that magnet at the spot it needs to be at, it's just a matter of sewing it in. beauty of this machine is it just pumps through. Um, caught on it. Oops. And if you don't have quilting gloves yet, you really need to think about them. Just even for everyday quilting, it just helps, you know, with feeding through quilts when you're putting binding on because it's so stiff and hard. Those magnets are worth their weight in gold, teaching my grandkids in the... Yeah, awesome! Quarter inch guide and magnet, please. Helen Cassidy, yeah. short owl. Um, what it means too is you don't need to get a quarter inch foot. Sue Livington, yep. Quarter inch ruler magnet for me, yeah. yeah. And Michelle Clark, yep. Sue Livington. Sue Livington. Michelle. Done. Got it. I think I put an E on your clock. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it means you don't have to buy a quarter inch foot, you just use a little magnet. And the little darling doesn't move. Hi Yvonne, uh, I'm Doreen, can I order a template for the baskets please? Darling, yes you can. Quarter inch guide and magnet for Yvonne, yep. Yvonne, and Yvonne, Doreen, basket, template, yep, done. What are we making? Um, and a basket, oh the basket one for Helen, yep. We're doing a, a um, table runner. We're going to do it with cathedral windows, the easy way. That's three. Up you go. That's a good girl. So we just run around these. And because I've got the glove on one hand, it means that I'm not struggling to hold onto it. It's not slipping. How much is the basket template? Julianne Masika, g'day darling. I was just talking about you last night, so I haven't seen you for a while. And I call you Jam here. Um, your template is 25 for a set of three. Three sizes in one pack. Small, medium, long. Wasn't it funny last night on the live with, with Mary? <laughs> Ah, yes they are though. <laughs> She's a dog. Love her guts. <laughs> Mary's good, good, good person. I think, oh yeah, that's all right. That went a bit over, but that's all right.
Yeah, so the fabric doesn't slip. So when you're feeding it through, you know, you you sort of, especially a quilt when you're putting binding on, you really struggle to hold on to them and, you know, push it through or whatever because it's so thick. You should be walk using a walking foot anyway, but um, she is a dear. Quarter inch guide and magnet for Lynn Marshall. Sure, darling. Um, yeah, it just means that you don't have to. You just literally put, you know, push things through normally. There's no fight. So even though they are designed for quilting, I do use them for other parts um, of my sewing journey. I bit excited then, didn't I? A bit over there we are so all I have to do with this is just turn as I go um, there's no shoving or picking it up or whatever and that's so use your gloves girls if you have got them use your gloves oops So in a minute, I'm going to have 12 blocks sewn. Oh, I keep catching on my um, foot. <laughs> and we'll press them out. Wait. Oh, hang on. There we go. Cut that. Come back. I might just unpick that. This is another beauty. If you don't have one of these, you need one of these. Even Mary, she had the old version, which was, wasn't my product. And um, she upgraded. There we go. That. That out of there. And we're off. Hold it down, Michelle. There we go. I forget I've got um, I forgot I forget I've got mine sometimes what the um, the shredder yeah even little things like that it's brilliant so quick you just snip that first stitch to loosen it up and off you go baby unpick remember that quilt you had to unpick did you <laughs> Aren't you glad I've got a really fast machine? Wait, I did it again. Cut off. I did it again. Snip. Eh, 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 eh. How cool is that? <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, that was nasty. <laughs> it happens. Especially if you've got to unpick, you know, a whole row or seam because you put it on the wrong end of the quilt or you <laughs> put it upside down or something ridiculous as we do. I'm just going to give that a bit of a tweak. There we go. Another one. This is a great one to do with Christmas gifts. Um, you can have Christmas themed fabric. Um, I've got some really nice petite Christmas fabric, the, the, um, the Christmas presents and you could do the Christmas presents on the front and just uh, 
green or a black or whatever on the back. So you've got the presents showing on the front. Therefore, you don't really have to quilt it because you've got a little pick up, a picture. Pick up? <laughs> um, and the black will just frame it, which is great. One more to go. And then you get to watch boringly as I turn them out and iron them. So you might want to go make a coffee and come back. Because uh, this is live, I can't fast forward. <laughs> and neither can you. <laughs> You're trapped! You're trapped, I say. Oh, wrong button. Alrighty. That's that. Okie doke. I'm going to just move the camera out of my way or I'll end up knocking it over. I'm going to put them there. That over there. This here also have plenty of wool mats in stock. I'm going to zoom out a little. I like the sound effects. They come for free. All right. Let's see if we can get this to not tangle up too much. I just want to get her moving. Wakey, wakey. Okay. Now, I would go around and snip all these. Actually, I'll take that away for a second. Just go around and snip. Probably the most time consuming. That was my hair. Just because you want them to turn out circular and not square. Have I gone all the way around yet? Are we there yet? No. I need a machine for this. Actually, if you've got um, what are those scissors, the, the shears, if you've got those, that works beautifully. Should um, get some of those. I really should. No, it's not the uh, net. This end is not playing nice. Oh bugger! Um, hey Jimmy. Hey Judy. Um, all right, so turn it around. And what you do is you just get your finger and run it along that seam all the way around. If you've got a tool, you can use a tool. On the finger does just the same. Just all the way around like that. And you're done. Look at that. That's one. So you press it. You don't top stitch or anything. You just press. I'm not using steam. I'm just using a dry iron. So if you got your little one handy, you can have that next to your desk. And that's one done. Next. Alright. You can't use big A scissors because big A scissors you just can't get close enough. That's why I use these duck bills. Um, because they've got a flat bottom. I can just slide in underneath and just snip. Nice and close and they're very sharp. Don't cut your stitches, that's one thing that will, you'll have to go back and sew the seam if you do, which is very annoying. Where do I finish? I can't see. Oh god, all the way around there. Huh? A bit excitable, wasn't I? Where do I stop? Oh there. <laughs> You're doing about a, an inch apart. Half an inch to an inch apart, plenty of room. Pinking shears, that's the ones I was thinking of. I said shears before, but I couldn't remember the first part of it. Pinking shears is a lot quicker. We've got them. I don't have a pair. I'm probably sure there's a pair somewhere, but they're not not easy to get to. Um, turn that out again. Just push it out. Just 
just run your finger along the seam, that just helps. You should be able to feel your way. Just push that out and you'll feel that the seam just sort of sits where it needs to. And that's your second one done. What are we making, Michelle? We are making a stained glass window table runner. So I have stitched them all together now and I'm just, and I've got 40, uh, three different colours, four of each, and uh, I'm going to just put them in their groups again, their colour groups. Um, and then I'll alternate their colours. So, they... oh no, I'm not. Do... Yeah, I'll need to alternate their colours. So this part does take a little while. If there's any questions you got, or anything you need to ask me, or anything about the tools I use, or what I had for dinner. <laughs> I think it was leftovers, just FYI. Uh, so she, made, what did I say? What did I say? Didn't I say cathedral? What did I say? Stained glass, sorry. <laughs> I said stained glass, didn't I? Because I was thinking of cathedral windows of stained glass. <laughs> How's that for a Freudian slip? Thanks, Tracy. Oh my god, Stella, sorry. That's just <laughs> Obviously I didn't get enough sleep. You can roll your seams out a little if they're, they're a bit skewy. <laughs> what, what kind of leftovers? Yeah. <laughs> Spicy mushrooms. Um, yeah. <laughs> I did, didn't I, Jimmy? Hopeless. Hopeless. That one. Oh, I should probably set that in the wrong spot. You're confusing some. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, cathedral window, not stained glass, just setting the record straight. I am confusing sometimes. I've got so many things on my mind. At any given moment, I could say anything. <laughs> Just slip out. <laughs> Was it you that went on holidays, Liz, there for a bit? You back from holidays yet? I think um, G's gone on holidays too to New Zealand, which is lovely, or on boat to New Zealand. Nice. Well deserved rest. Holiday. She needs to keep that knee up. She's had, had her needle and stuff on her knee. I get mine on Monday on my shoulder. What else is there that's news I can tell you? It's okay, Michelle. I understand. I've done the training and you do not need to explain. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. Have a moment here and there. <laughs> All right. If you find you've got little bits that don't want to curve out, just sort of... Um, just sort of roll it between your fingers. I never go anywhere. I'm a hermit. Or is it, was it Sue? Was it one of, was it Sue? That went, your friend that went, I'm thinking of. I can see better this side. Yeah, I'll make sure I grab that fabric. No, that's too hard.
So if I keep the scissors close to my body, I'll figure it out. I've got a bit more control. Mrs. Emma, she would, because you guys are close. Oh, that's it, Sue, in her caravan. Yeah, that's it, Sue. Sue Simpson? Yeah, you guys are super duper close. I don't know why that one must be hard. All right. Is she a sister or just a good friend, Liz? Because you guys are like sisters. You're that close. Probably closer than sisters. <laughs> well, some sisters I know. Good friend, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, must have known each other for a long time. Did you see the scam I had the other day? I put it up on my my private page, on my personal page, and this scammer saying oh g'day how are you and trying to get me to ask questions I knew straight away because the person that they were talking through has dementia and is not savvy obviously with the internet and computers do you part yeah Yeah, I've got a couple that are like that. Yeah, they're bloody rude, aren't they? So I thought, no, nah, I'm going to tell you what an idiot you are. Yeah. Some scammer over wherever. So... At least this one I'm turning out all right without a fight. <laughs> oh, did you? I had one yesterday. Yeah. I went through all my requests um, today and I deleted them all that, you know, anyone I didn't know. They're just annoying. Some of them copy, um, like the photos and everything, copy the whole account and others will actually hack in and that one actually hacked in because it came up that she was a friend of my Facebook, whereas the others normally come up, this is different to your friend on Facebook, this one's not in Messenger or whatever, so, or this is in Messenger only, not in Facebook, and that's normally a good giveaway. Um, I had my, oh hang on, I got abused because I said no to a TV on Marketplace I blocked. <laughs> oh Jesus Liz, I had a first Jehovah Witness call this morning, they usually don't walk the 35 metre driveway, <laughs> ban us. And let those go. Oh no! I oh, know. Oh, they ban them once they know. Because you report, if you report them, <clears throat> and you can actually um, block not just them, but any other account that they open up. So I always click on that as well. You know, if that's possible, if that features there. Because sometimes they'll open up 
you know, six accounts with a different name, but using the same person. They're just fake accounts because they're, you know, that kind of person. Um, oh, I've done it the wrong way now. Yeah, I've done it the wrong way. I'm going to have to do it that way. Is that the way I wanted? Yeah, that's fine. I can't remember now. Black is the front and that's the back. Anyway, it is what it is. Now I think originally I was going to do it the other way. But I cut the black, so the black's going to have to be the front, which means I can quilt on the inside of them. And I think that's why I had it in my head. I was going to do the black on the inside, on the front, so that I could quilt it. I can't remember what happened 10 minutes ago. It's crazy. That's why I screenshot all comments and stuff and save them in my notes so I can go back through later. If I don't do that straight away, <laughs> it don't happen. <laughs> Confusing when the teacher gets confused. Stop it. I'm not confused. It will be what it'll be, Pat. That's how I look at it. Yeah, that's the way I wanted it, because I wanted the black on the inside. It don't matter. But I'm pretty sure that's why, because I had all the black one colour on the back. I think I talked about having it the way. I love the ones that flatter you, and I think you're brainless and let them in. <laughs> Quick look in the mirror. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a sea captain and I'm a navy blah, blah, blah and you're such a beautiful woman and you seem so lovely and like to get to know you and <laughs> you only have to look at their photo and know that they've taken that photo from somewhere in, in internet land and it's certainly not them. Very true, your teaching is better for me to understand. <laughs> it's because I do it in layman's terms, Pat. <laughs> I'm very layman. Oh, am I getting it? No, I'll go back. Um, very layman. Oh, I did get it. No. there I'm gonna go about three after this one it's fairly quick really it's probably the longest part elbow out too far and if you notice I haven't taken my glove looks interesting does it uh, Melissa <laughs> so we're gonna turn this out I've got three more to go. It's fairly quick. And you could sit at night and, you know, you could have them all there and just turn them out at night watching TV or something. It's sort of, you know, not something you have to think about too hard. There we go. Turn it out. I need the that reading a pattern get confusing on oh, just like oh okay yep yeah, yep yeah. yeah sometimes um i find that most well i find most people uh, do it much easier with a demonstration and if i don't use well i just use the words i normally use i don't go into any you know high tech stuff um well i don't do high tech anyway <clears throat> And um, I need, uh, 
take them to Hobart in the community car four hours each way. What's that, Jimmy? Yeah, they are oh, doing these. That's a great idea while you're driving. Well, if you've got them already trimmed, all you've got to do is sit there and turn them out. Um, or you can trim them in the car if you've got a steady hand. A bit hard in the car because it's moving. It can be a bit, a bit awkward. But if you've got um, pinking shears, it'll be all right in the car. I don't have them. I need to invest in a pair. I might have to see if G's got a pair I can buy off her. Do a trade off. <laughs> I can mainly do by watch and copy. It's hard to get. It's hard to get while it's on an abstract paper or something. Yeah, absolutely. Can be very hard. Yeah. You could, if you're in the car, Jimmy, and you've got a steady hand, you could do the clipping. But I reckon that if you had the pinking shears, you could probably do that in the car quite easily without clipping an edge. Um, doing the snipping version, like I'm doing, it would be hard. But Melissa, yeah, I, I find that <clears throat> people are more visual. Yeah, I really think I need to get... I've, I've thought about it for a while now, and I... And now I've got this template here. I'm thinking, yeah, probably stop thinking about it and just do it, Michelle. Because I've always sort of thought, yeah, am I going to use them enough? But probably will with the template. All right, we're nearly there. I do like these scissors for this because they are flat on the bottom and they're very pointy. Um, these are a small set, like a um, small pair, they're mini ones. I do have these plenty in stock if you're after a pair. If you don't have them, these are called duck bills. Um, I'm getting quicker. The ironing pad is a great idea. Melissa, yeah, I send those, um, yeah, pinking shears, yeah. Um, I sell those. They're 35, that size. I've got a larger one, too, that is 20 by 20 inches, and that's 55. This one's, I think it's 12 by 18, from memory. Use them instead of... Yeah, that's right, Stella. Yeah, you would. Visual on one, Michelle, saying you're driving. Two, you're saying you'll turn them out while driving. My brain went, wow. Then I remembered someone would be driving for you. <laughs> Wendy. <laughs> Wendy, you're funny. <laughs> yeah, it won't be while he's driving. <laughs> Jimmy doesn't drive. <laughs> Jimmy is um, being driven like Miss Daisy. <laughs> Driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> yeah, so I do sell those. Um, and one more to go. You would be drinking. <laughs> That's right, Wendy. we do a retreat in Tassie soon, I think. Come over. I've got to organise one. I want to find a place that's sort of central to everyone, that everyone can get to. Although, I mean, you can drive four hours, I think, and be one side of the state to the other, about two or three hours or so. <clears throat> East to west, maybe. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've been there and driven along there. Would be good, though. I've got quite a few people who, um, it's easy, I have my cane in front doing all the work with sign on the back, caution blind driver. <laughs> ah, dear. Madman at wheel. 
dear. Alrighty. Turn them around. See, now, if I wasn't live, it'd be about my time right now. I would stop, go make a coffee, come back and do this. Rest of this part. Um, let's press this, but we're going to keep going. Um, I've got to keep an eye on the time because uh, I do have a class, another class at one, and I don't want to be going for hours and hours. All right, so that is all of them. So I should have four of each, which I do. I do in three and four. That's all of them. There we go. So now it's a matter of putting them in there. I just got to get rid of that Ugh, thing. Um, putting them in some sort of order. Um, so it's going to be six. So we're going to go one, two. And you won't really be able to see much of what I'm doing at the moment. That one there, 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 that one there. So one, two, three, four, five. And I've got two left. I need to swap that one out and put that one up there and that one there. Got it. All right. So all I'm going to do is make two rows, that one, and this one. Eh, it's my two rows, okay? So I'm going to put one row aside and do this row. Bang. Let's turn it around to the machine. And all I'm going to do is get my template wherever I threw it. Oh. All right, where'd I put you? Up there yet. What do I do with my template? Let's see what I did with my template. <laughs> oh, there it is. It's on top of the other templates. That's why I couldn't see it. Thank you. <laughs> um, and I will need, because these are going to go, I'm going to put them, see that um, part that I've got open there, that little gap. I'm going to put those sort of together so that they're on the same edge like that. So one's there and then one's here. I'm going to clip that, if I don't throw them around, like that. I'm going to hold this on here. I'm just going to eyeball the center roughly it's going to stitch right along right along where that's that um, cut is so that is fine but I'm going to put a mark on it and I know I had a marking pencil yesterday and again I've buried it again if only you could see my desk crazy mad stuff Alright, where'd I put it? Oh, there it is. So I'm just gonna put a line there. That's on that one. And I'm gonna go there on that side. Okay, I'm only doing one at a time and do those lines there. So I've got sort of a guide. <clears throat> Again, I just want to make sure. Yep. Alright. So what I'm going to do is so take that away. And just line up. And you guys are seeing more table than you are sewing. 
So I'm going to sew along that line. Don't stress too much, but just don't get your needle caught in that that um, open seam, that open bit of fabric there. Just got to make sure that's under. And I'm going to start in a little and stitch backwards then come back over. And I'm just going to hold that flat. If you've got a um, finger saver, you can put your finger saver on here to avoid your finger getting caught up in that needle. It's just to hold that down. Oop, there goes the foot in underneath that. There. And go across. Now you can keep sewing, so you can keep going on to the, the next one. So the next one, I'm going to get the two, put them together like so. Again, clip that end. Tony is my usual driver. Tony drives Miss Daisy. <laughs> That's... All right. <clears throat> Place that on top again and sort of center it. It's just an eyeball. Draw that line all the way around. Again, it's right on that trim mark. Don't matter. I'm going to do that one first because it's easier that way. I'm going to, oops, it is, come off that other one and just stitch. Now, as you get closer, yeah, you guys will be using a walking foot. You might need to lift your foot so that it comes onto the fabric well. You can back stitch a little. Just going to release that clip and aim the other edge. Back stitch and get the next one. Hope you're following okay. Any questions, please feel free to ask. Don't sort of think you can't ask or there's any silly questions. There's no such thing. Or if you think I'm doing something wrong, stop me. <laughs> it's always helpful. Um, does happen. All right. Okay. And this side, again, just stitch off the edge, coming on to the next one, but just lift your foot so that you don't, you know, um, crush that fabric and push and pinch it up and stuff. Just sort of manipulate it a little, play nice. them apart and you're going to repeat so that's one two three just like that one two and three um i don't even remember whether i put them in order or not now they're going to open them up i'm gonna to have to check well that's definitely not right so it's got to go that way so the colors aren't the same and that one won't go that, that'll go that way. Now you can make this as long as you want. I just thought I'd do it at six, you can have ten. There's, if we can, um, for those of us who can't see, we can use a bow and pencil or do we need a removal? No, bow and pencil. Sorry, um, yes, I'm using a bow and pencil, just FYI. Okay, so sorry about that, Jimmy. My apologies. I'm just marking with a bow and pencil, and um, that's just giving me my lines. Okay, so I'm going to pick up those two. Okay, and I'm just going to grab, yep, beautiful. 
grab that, clip that down, join those seams together, but open them out and clip them together. Now this is where those big A clips will come in handy because it's really quite thick there. This one might not hold on for too long, um, but it'll do the job for now. Um, then I'm just going to, because this one doesn't have any lines drawn on it, so I'm just going to quickly do that while I'm doing my thighing. Now I can see that that's going to be too high up. You can see how it's too high up there. If I join that up there, it's only going to come down. It's going to be a massive gap there. So I need to... I need to, when I sew these together... It needs to be straight across there because this is going to be closed off at the edge. Um, it is, I don't want a massive gap there. So I'm going to close that off. I'm having that there. So I'm going to fold that down. finger press that a little and I'm just gonna mark that line now it might be a little off because I might have moved the template as I was going and same with this one I'm just gonna press that over and finger press that down so I can see and I'm just going to draw that line there. And same with this side. But I'll make sure it's straight. Oops, it is. Okay. And then the other side. Uh, yes, okay. might as well while I'm here. Okay. So what you do is, I've just realised with this, is put that template right up to the edge. Silly me. Right up to the edge, and that's giving me the exact line I need. Right up to the edge of that fold. There you go. See? I'm not that silly after all, am I? That's all going to get folded over, so all that pencil mark is going to go away. You're not going to see it. And same with this edge, right on the edge of it. There and there. All right, I might do that edge too while I'm at it. So right up to the edge. And then do your pencil mark. Okay, so I'm ignoring this one and I'm going with that one. Okay, so you'll see in a minute what I mean. Now, sewing those two together, is that right? Yes, it is. That's right, yes, it is. Okay, so I'm going to sew. I'm just going to clip that, and I'm going to clip that. I'm going to sew this edge here, that one, and then I'll come back and do that one. I just wanted to get my markings right before I just start randomly sewing. So when you come to this edge here, you want to have where the two join, you want to have that needle just go past it. So it pretty much stitches in the empty bit. And I'll show you what I mean. In a, like I'll show you with close up. <clears throat> so. 
so I've ran I've run the actual seam in I've put my needle right in that little gap there and then run it along there okay and you can sort of play with it and tweak it a little bit if you want to um, that will come later so I'm sorry I'm just fiddling with it off screen um, so I'll turn it back over this side because I want to make sure I get my colors on the right way um, that one's going to go there that'll do that's good so I need to have in the center there I can just hide under there have that there I like how you are adapting and keep impro improving um, play it to my purchase plan. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, and keep improving, adjusting it. That's a real, that is real when you do it right. Yeah, look, you, you do. And oh, look, I sort of, Melissa, I don't know whether you've been or know of me or been watching for a while or not. I, I literally just, sometimes it can be a bit of a seat of pants situation. Um, and I'm sort of, Fairly straightforward, straight honest, right up, right there. How I do it and how I go about it and whether I think it works or not, whether I've made it work, whether I've buggered it up. Um, but yeah. So, all right. So next one, I'm just going to write Stella down for um, Cathedral. Yeah, Stella, you could absolutely do this by hand. All right, so let's go back to the way I said before, which was putting that on the edge of your fabric. Straight there. That actually is going to come too far, so I'm going to move it up a bit because I really want that needle to be above right where I said before. So I'm going to line it up a little bit further. I'm going to make sure it's straight. So straight would mean I've got it straight on this side because I've got that seam there and straight across there. So I need to line that up and go there. So my first lines weren't too far. I'm just going to scratch out those ones and that's where I'm going to go to. So that one there, that one there. And look, we're all so different too. So, you know, one thing I sew might be exactly the same as the next. Maybe I can make some to chemo, take it there. Yeah, that's a good idea. Those rippers are invaluable. I use mine so often, thank goodness I have. <laughs> yeah, I know. Those, um, can I have a template please added to my things who was that who said that oh hang on i'll have to go back into the comments there's something i'm watching um can i have a template please yep rose we'll do on the machine getting quite good at the machine now good um so rose johnson wants a template yes <laughs> um i reckon with this one I might have sewn the seam a bit crooked, so I'm not too sure whether that one's going to sit nicely, but we'll just wing it. We'll go with it. Should be right, mate. <laughs> Let's just do it. Let's get it done. So as long as that needle goes in just outside that seam, we're good to go. Yeah, see, I reckon that one's going to have a bit of an issue but I might be able to tweak it we'll see Look at it a little. we'll see I might have done that crooked oh no that's all good yeah no she's right it's happening slowly but surely 
There we go. It's a little bit higher on that end than there, but once I fold it over, I can I can sort of, you know, tweak and play with that a little to get that to sit flat. You know, I can sort of push it in, sew across there and make it flat to this one. I could not have this one down as far. Um, so that's your six. I like you thinking, Michelle. <laughs> Would it be best to mark before you sew the circles together? I have done it that way. But um, then what happens is um, I find that I still sew them together wrong. So, yeah, so that's that's six. So we're going to do 12. Um, oh, you know what I did here. I've sewn them together that way. It doesn't matter. So we've got, I've sewn them in twos instead of six across and six across. That's all right. It doesn't matter. Should be right. I know what I did. That's why it's, um, the colours aren't the same as what I had before. Silly be arch. Okay, so let's do this one here with that one there. And so we'll join these two together. You could try them by hand. You probably find you'll get them um, closer to being perfect with hand. Um, because you can sort of, when you need to do that tweaky thing, you can do it um, a lot quicker. Alright, so I'm just going to put that on the edge. And I've buried my pencil again. Alright, what do I do with it? There it is. I see now you have less fabric in the corners with the circles. Nifty. Yeah, unpick. Be buggered. I'm not unpicking. <laughs> no unpicking today. I don't have time. <laughs> Just pop that up a bit. Grabbed it. Should we write? Yep. So then we can sew that to the end of one of these. I can sew it to that one, but I want the lighter colour over there. So alternate them. And again, join that up there, flatten that out, flatten that one out, and clip that in the middle. So this will help with that, getting that straight at the end. All right. So I'll just clip that. No time with all at all with a shredder. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I had to do it um, earlier. Had to un reverse sew a couple of um, edges seams because I I caught the um, the other fabric. All right. So now I've got that straight. You've got straight here. Just remember. Remember, don't have it like that. You've got to have it straight across. Um, otherwise, I think um, you'll end up all over the show. And then again, straight here. Using your seam and everything. Mark it along. And we're going to sew that. And you can imagine trying to push this along under your machine without a, um, that's too small, says Gidget. Should be right, mate. I tell ya. It'll be fine. Amazing what you can do when you need to tweak. 
If you would add a quarter inch when first cutting out, that would make it easier. Yeah, it would. Can you make smaller circles or one size only? It's only one size mat, um, but you can always, any circle, you could always ad lib. Um, no dramas at all. I'm going to pop that one in there and that one there. Just checking the other side. Mm, maybe that one and that one. No, needs to be that one and that one. <clears throat> All right. Yep. Add more circles. <laughs> I'm loving this. Uh, yeah, if you add a quarter, yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so if you added a quarter, yeah, absolutely, you could um, add a quarter around. Just means you wouldn't be able to use a blade. Um, you would need to use um, just a pair of scissors. So I used a blade. So uh, that sort of. Um, stop that idea from happening that way all right another two Get that scent of it in there, just like that. Make sure you haven't got them both going the same way, like they've got to be open. Get that in there. Make sure on the other side it is. Could you put true groups on it to stop it dancing as you cut? Uh, yes, I did. On mine, I've put true grips on there yeah yep does help to stop it from moving around if we wanted to the colors in the middle of the windows we would cut the turning gap on the colored side correct 100 percent yep if you wanted the other way around all right so that way and that way In that way. I've got nice points. This and this one. Oops, the days. Right sides together. Excellent. I have made a mental note. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're going to put the um, the slit in the fabric that's going on the on the front facing you. sort of I'm gonna undo that one if you can see see how it's pushed it can you see that there's a navy bit there and then it's pushed it I'm gonna unpick that because that's gonna be a nuisance I'm gonna snip that bit of stitching if I can get to it tiny little booger Might be easy at this end itchy nose there we go Right, I missed the beginning. Yeah, no dramas. This little baby, flat to the fabric, just like that. Nice and simple. Take that thread off. Just leave that out of the way for a sec.
Did she say unpick? Reverse sewing. <laughs> Going well. I haven't watched one of these videos before. Okay, cool. Well, welcome. Um, now this is the last one. And I might go go that way. Just keep adding on to this end. I could add it on to the other end, doesn't matter. Oh. She's, I did not, never, would I ever say unpick. <laughs> never. <laughs> I refuse to admit it. I deny it till my death. <laughs> and that in there, that on there. <laughs> Never happened, Trace, ever. Michelle has lots of videos on YouTube. They are all great to watch. Thank you, Stella. Appreciate that lot. <laughs> Pat, you feel me? Never. <laughs> I'll go to my grave without without unpicking. No, I do. I unpick a lot. <laughs> all right. So lining up my seams just so I can make sure that I miss that join. I don't want to get that join. But I don't want it to be crooked and coming across and take the squaring out. All right. Last one of these. those now let me turn this camera around a bit and straighten her up oh wrong way eight minute oh you dizzy yet we all do but not admitting that's exactly right all right okay so that is the back okay I, I sort of randomly put I didn't do too bad um, this is the front now this is where you need pins don't have a huge amount of pins because I keep using clips um, but what we're going to do and I'm not going to do it right now because it's nearly 12 30 and I've got a one o'clock class um, so we'll do a second part of this I'll do this this afternoon after the 2 30 live and we'll finish it off and show you how to finish that off all right so it'll become your stained glass window I've just got to get it get my fingers right Okay, so we'll we'll get we'll get that um, sorted a little bit later on. Um, that one might be a little bit far out. That could give me a bit of trouble. Um, I think that's that one that Gidget said might be a bit too small, but the others will work in just fine. So we'll turn them in and turn them in. The other option too is if you wanted to, you could actually leave it open as a, like a scalloped edge. I'm gonna make sure that's straight. That's the main thing. And you're gonna get that cathedral window look. Okay. Do I say stained glass? Sorry, cathedral window. Yeah, sorry. Oh my God. Debbie Morris template. Yeah, no dramas. Um, oh. Um, no worries okay I've written that down <laughs> so the first ones I'll flatten out are these and they get pinned down and I'll stitch them stitch them down and then you've got the outer ones but like I say you go along and you push it down and we'll go right I did, yeah, did it again didn't I yeah I'm hopeless and it's mad mad as cut snake so we'll come back after the law uh, the demo at 2 30 you see I've got a little bit close there and I crossed over this is what happens when you cross over can you see that there when I've stitched those together I've crossed over instead of coming into that gap and that's created like a little um, lip there now I've got two options I can snip it or I can leave it. I'm gonna just snip that, open that out, just to release it a little, and sort of tuck it, tuck it under. Sort of tuck one under the other. It'll play up against the other one. 
and I'll try and stitch it down so it just sort of meets meets in there did you put any batting in yes crap fire alarm in the building I have to evacuate <laughs> I hope I can come back and watch this part. It's very interesting. You, yes, no worries. Take care, Melissa. Um, <laughs> did you? Yes, I did. There's batting in here. As you go, you put batting, like you put it in so it's nice and soft. Um, you can put a couple of layers in if you want to, whatever you like. All right. So we'll get going now so I can go and have a little quick lunch and something before the one o'clock demo and then we'll come back and we'll fiddle with this after the 2.30 one. So probably around about the three quarter past three o'clock and we'll do we'll do the rest of this. Alright so and I'll have it pinned and ready to sew. Okay so we'll go and um, we'll see you soon. Alright guys thanks for joining me. Part one finished. <laughs> see ya.